Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's Season 4, Episode 6, and today we play our first game on camera with Stevenage after introducing them in the last episode. That's right, for those of you that missed the last episode, you've got a big spoiler, we've moved teams. We're at Stevenage now, we left the first few games and played them off camera because we wanted to get to the 1st of January to see where we were and what players we could get in and out. As you can see, we've started on the transfer screen to show you that, but before we get into it, it's the first episode since Christmas, so I hope you all had a great time. But we start on the transfer screen for a very clear reason. We have managed, as promised when we joined the club, to get a senior affiliate. Our board delivered, we've got to praise them for that, and you can see they've managed to get one with Liverpool, and our director of football is now trying to get two players from there. There's also an incoming in Mitch Burford from Everton. He's the one who was on loan. It expired on the 1st of January and our director of football went in for him before he left but it didn't go through in time so that's why he's trying to extend the loan but as it stands today we have no first choice left back. One of the other problems we obviously had in the last episode is that we were nearly four grand over the wage budget which meant we had no manoeuvring room in this window but thankfully we've managed to curb that slightly. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So if we go to our transfer history, we've managed to send three of the youngsters out on loan. So they weren't going to ever feature in the first team. And they've just got three, four, five hundred pound off the wage bill each. And then if we go to our squad more remarkably, either our chairman or director of football is the ultimate negotiator. Almost every player that was on a contract till the end of this season has signed a new deal on significantly reduced terms. So Luke Wilkinson's on 250 a week. Joel Ward, one of the hot prospects, signed a new deal on the same wage, 210. James Ferry took a three or four hundred pound a week wage cut. I think he was on 1.1 or 1.2 before. A lot of the backup players he's tied down. And you may think, well, that shows a lack of progression. They don't want to move forward. But they're perfectly adequate as backups. And they're signing deals for 200 quid a week. And if that means we can get a first 11 of superstars next year, then that would be great. And what we do need to do this January is make sure we're set up for next July. Because it is the year of the World Cup next season. And if we're still here, the season will start in mid-July. And we don't want to get caught out by that. But you can see outside the top six or seven names that were already here or on longer contracts, most of the others are earning peanuts in comparison. Mark McKee took a huge wage cut. Arthur halved his wage. He was on 500 a week. He's now on 250. It's just absolutely brilliant. And a lot of the lads have shown that they really want to play for this club. The one we are hoping to get out in this window is Andronikos Georgiou. He's a left winger from Tottenham. He keeps going on international duty, he gets injured a lot, and he's not particularly good for my style of play. We've got another winger on the left who's on loan for free till the end of the year, so we'd much rather use him and then change shape in the summer if possible. So he's on two and a half grand a week, one of the highest paid players at the club, and hopefully the director of football will be able to get him out. The other one was Ben Kennedy, we were hoping to get him out as well, but we can see that the director of football's now offered him a new deal, and if he accepts that, for the quality of player he is, we'll be more than happy to keep him here. 1,800, it's dropping one and a half grand off the wage bill. That's nearly all of the amount we're over budget at the moment, so a lot of these lads are showing a great desire to stay here, and hopefully we'll be able to do well as a result. But you can see we have snuck up to 18th place in the league. We've moved up a few positions. It's so tight down there that it doesn't mean much. Between 16th and 21st, there's just one point separating them. But crucially, we have managed to move nine points clear of the relegation zone. And just like our Torquay save in Season 3, it's Salford who are down there struggling. But let's show you the results. It's been really strange. In general, the outcomes have been brilliant. But if I asked you which games we dominated out of these, you probably would have thought it would be the last two where we've scored goals, we've attacked with vigour. But it's not. We've actually been outplayed in those two. Where our opposition had more chances and we were quite lucky to get wins in truth. But the three before it, against Crawley, Chesterfield and Forest Green, who were the leaders at the time, we absolutely wiped the floor with them, but just didn't have a clinical edge. We've got Junior Moraes up front, who scored a few goals, but I just feel if we had a really good striker up there, we'd probably be winning most of these matches. Certainly the side were expected to finish in the top half of the table at the start of the season. Obviously, we got drafted in because they're down with the relegation scrappers, but you can see why they were predicted a good finish, because they are really a decent side and just need a goal scorer. So our first game at the club, we did take charge, but we took a bit of Paul Jules' advice. Murray scored a really good goal in that one as we nicked it 1-0, but we were absolutely dominant. If we go into the match so I can show you, 16 shots and 7 on target. They only had the one in that match. We dominated possession too, and it was a well-deserved win. 
We followed it up with a good draw on the road at Aldershot, again looking solid at the back, despite having our full-backs away on international duty. Wilding was back for this one, but the left-back still wasn't here. We then won again at home to Mansfield three days later. We were back to first choice fullbacks in this one and Junior Moraes got a brace including a 94th minute goal to make it 2-0 although we still got a scare after that. But into December we started a disappointing run largely against high flying teams. Forest Green were the leaders at the time but in the next game we managed to get a good draw on the road. You can see it was three away games in a row and getting a point at Chesterfield with a late equaliser from the centre half is always a good way to go home. Not a huge trip that one, the same for Crawley afterwards, it was a 3-2 defeat, we just had a little spell of 15 minutes in the second half where it all went wrong, but we did manage to get two goals and we were starting to look good going forward then. We followed it up with a reverse result, a 3-2 win at home to Swindon, Junior Morace with a brace and Archibald scored, we were 2-0 down, had us drop, went all out attack, left no one but the two centre halves at the back and it paid dividends. Moray's got a brace off the bench and it was an absolutely brilliant performance in that last 20 minutes. We then won 4-2 at home to Strugglers Crew. They're down in 22nd at the moment. Obviously our FIFA 19 team. So obviously we know a lot of the players quite well. The two scorers are still there with us in our career mode on FIFA. But they weren't able to do enough to stop us winning 4-2. Moraes with a brace again. Ward and Ferry with the others. And Moraes has done quite well for us. But unfortunately he's on 3,200 a week. And his ability just doesn't reflect that. But while he's here we'll keep him up there. And hopefully he'll be another that will sign a lower wage in the future. But obviously that's not up to us. We don't do transfers and contracts here. So a really positive start to the career. I'm so happy with how it's gone generally, but there is still a little bit of room for improvement. Although it will take a window or two for this team to reflect us, and that depends on our director of football doing the business. We'll have a look at the couple he's trying to bring in from Liverpool in a minute, but as we've talked a lot about him, it's only fair we introduce him. He has been hired since the last episode. Danny Collins, the former Stoke defender, a lump who used to play awful football. Not got great judgement, but a good personality and very disciplined, so hopefully he'll be able to bring in players with strong mentalities. Although he is earning nearly as much as me, which I do resent slightly. But let's go and look at the two he's trying to bring in at the moment. Shamal George is a 23-year-old goalkeeper from Liverpool. Probably our weakest position in the first 11 before Burford's loan expired. And this guy would be a huge upgrade. He looks like at least a League One standard player. And the fact that we'd be getting him just because it's our parent club is absolutely brilliant for us. I don't know if anyone else is in for him. Hopefully not. So this one should go through and we'll have him in goal in the next episode. Again, a strong personality, just like Danny Collins, so that's working out for us. Moving on, we've also got Edward Tagzeth, I think that is. Apologies if it's wrong. Not quite as good a personality, but still decent, but a very good midfielder. And I'll be very surprised if he joins us, because he looks far too good for the level of football we're at. A sporting personality, a left footer, and he'd certainly add a lot of brilliance and creativity to our midfield. A hard worker too, and I'd absolutely love to have him here to push us up the table for the rest of the season. And obviously Burford, we did have him here already, but he's a decent left back. He's quick, he's done okay for us, and it'd just be nice to keep him on board. So we've got a first choice player in that position. He's capped for England under 19s, so he must have a high potential in the future. But let's take you into today's game. We wanted to show you a game on the pitch as well. We're away to High Flyers Lincoln, so it could be a really difficult afternoon for us as the FA Cup goes on, but we're no longer in that. So we're the underdogs for this one. Lincoln have won two of the three games they've played in the past, and we've still got a couple of injuries to contend with. We've got to pick this position left back. I think we're really going to struggle without Burford. Harry Hawkins has to come in. I think his first name's Harry. I've just guessed that. It is Harry. Absolutely brilliant. But he's only one and a half star, so it's a slight difference difference and downgrading quality. Ollie Bailey will come on the bench for him and we look into this game in good shape aside from that position. So we've got Lewis Ward in goal, Wilden and Hawkins at a full back with Wilkinson and Denham at centre half. Joel Ward and James Ferrier in central midfield with Archibald Flores and Whitaker behind the race. Ben Kennedy's just getting a rest for this one but once he's got his new contract sorted and his morale improves he'll almost certainly come back into the 11. We would like to get Braden Shaw out of the club. He's not really that good. And in fact, I'm going to swap him for Greaves just so we've got one of the younger prospects on the bench who can get some first team football if required. But let's get into the match and fingers crossed after all my waffle, we won't disappoint in this one. Let's see what we can do. 
it does seem that we're playing against this defensive 4-1-4-1 quite a lot. I don't know if it's just the attacking players we have are threatening, but it is a little bit strange that teams aren't coming out against us when we're right down near the bottom of the league. We're going to ask them to show us what they can do, and fingers crossed that'll be enough for us. Let's get into the kickoff with Junior Moraes. Back to Flores. Flores out to the right to Archibald. One thing I can almost guarantee is we'll play good passing football. It's just whether we've got an end product depends on the mood Moraes is in each day. Joel Ward, the holding midfielder, who's on £210 a week. I've got to show you him quickly because he's absolutely brilliant. His determination's dropped slightly, but he's certainly not a player who should be on £200 a week. He's only 18 years of age and he's got a really good personality, so hopefully moving forward, he'll be an absolute star for us. Let's get the ball back into play. We're headed it away with Wilkinson to Ferry. Joel Ward, Ferry, Flores, get out to the left back. We've got an overlap now. Hawkins can get it down the line to Whitaker. He's the loney we talked about, keeping Georgiou out the side, even before he got his injury. Joel Ward in the middle again to Archibald. Goes for the shot. What a goal that is. I was going to say he's been disappointing so far. He's cutting off the right and been a bit disappointing. But we got him in the side for Ben Kennedy today. And what a wonderful goal to start the day in perfect style. We're 20 minutes in now with Wild into Flores. Now Ward, he's orchestrated the midfield so far. Flores out to Archibald. Flores again, he finds Ferry. Ferry gets it out wide to Wild in the fullback. Inside to Ward and now Archibald again. Flores to Ferry. What a beautiful move. This is Whitaker's in. Oh, it's a great save. That could have been one of the goals of the season. And certainly our best goal at Stevenage so far. A wonderful team move, but it's knocked away. Wilkinson wins a header at the back post from the corner, but it's straight into the keeper's arms. A quarter of the game gone, and we've been magnificent. We've got a throw on the left again on halfway with Hawkins. He finds Wilkinson. We're keeping the ball lovely here with Denham at the back. Out to Wild in the right back. To Archibald down the wing. We've got the ball back to Andrade. Now on Connor's got it in the middle for Lincoln to Cole. Cole gets it to O'Connor. We're going to delve into the tactic a bit more, but I wanted you to see how it played out on the pitch first before I showed you what we were trying to do. There's not many instructions on, as you saw at the start, but we will go into it into a bit more detail. Cole's got the ball in the middle for Longridge again. Longridge gets it into Andrade. Good save by Ward, and it's a great tackle by the right-back Wilden, who gets it out for a throw-in for Lincoln. And that was the last highlight of the half. It's a 1-0 lead. It's not been a great open game, but we've played some good football and are deservedly 1-0 ahead. We're going to passionately tell the lads we're pleased with how it's going and fingers crossed they won't get arrogant in the second half. Any sign of complacency and we tend to concede two or three, as has happened in a couple of games already. Here's Longridge on the right-hand side for Lincoln. Ball into the back post, but it's over here and out for a goal kick. We'll happily deal with those all day. We're up to the hour mark, Archibald with an in-swinging free kick, headed away by the Lincoln defence, but Denham, Denham gets it to Wilkinson, the two centre-halves combining in an attacking position. Joel Ward now back to Denham, Denham again just needs to keep possession for Wilding, and Ward, Ward's got caught out in the middle here, O'Connor's running through one-on-one, -on -one. can Wilkinson get back, he does, and forces him backwards brilliantly. Archibald gets the ball, and now we go over the top for Whitaker. Moraes is busting a gut to get back in the middle, Archibald's there though, and Baxter has to make a brilliant save to tip it over. Over, and we've got another corner with an hour on the clock. Archibald with an in-swinger. Wilkinson loses out at the back post and now Whitaker recovers. Goes down the left wing, tries to deliver but it's blocked. And Andrade will run around over halfway. Denham intercepts though. And the highlight ends with us in a comfortable position at 1-0 ahead. Just over 20 minutes to go, about a quarter of the game remaining, we're going to make some changes in a moment. We're keeping the ball at the back with Hawkins, all the way back toward the keeper. Ward, out to Wild in the right back, trying to get in behind now with Archibald. Archibald into Flores, the attacking midfielder, playing well in this number 10 role to Moraes. Moraes finds Ferry, it was a lovely reverse ball, but he just wasn't quite on the same wavelength and it was cleared. Here's Whitaker though to Hawkins as we come forward again. Ferry down the left to Whitaker. Back inside to Ferry again and Ward. Ward to Flores. Got a bit of space 20 yards out. Goes for the shot and what a goal again. Archibald with a cracker in the first half and Flores with a screamer in the second. There was no pressure on him but even so it was a fantastic finish and we're 2-0 up with 20 minutes remaining and I am loving managing this club. Let's make some changes. Moraes has had a disappointing game up front. We'll give Draper a few minutes up there. He plays as a target man so we'll move him into that role. Whitaker's not had the best game, so we'll bring Kennedy on for him. I'm not quite sure what his best position is. I think we'll switch Archibald over. Kennedy on the right-hand side as an inside forward, and Archibald on the left as a winger. We'll just see if they're better in support or attacking duties. They both want to be attacked, but I tell you what, we're 2-0 up. Let's just play on support. 
McKee's also going to come on. He'll replace Ferry for the last 15, just to keep everyone fit and ensure we've got fresh legs in midfield. 15 to go, and hopefully we can keep this impressive 2-0 lead. We've got an attacking throw with Wilding on the right. In towards Draper, the target man, but he's headed away back to Wilding. Delivers to the back post. Webster away. It's fallen to Ward on the edge, though. Archibald back to Ward again. Goes for the shot, but it's high and wide. And the youngsters had a good game, but that wasn't his finest moment. Three or four minutes left is Stevenage with the corner. Everyone's missed the header and now they've scored. And we're going to have to go a bit more defensive as a result. Will time waste, be more disciplined, play for set pieces and slow the pace down when we get the ball. Let's get back into it and fingers crossed we can hold on. Because based on the performance we deserve it. Kennedy has a free kick at the other end and it's just wide of the post with a minute to go. We're going to drop to cautious just for stoppage time and hopefully there won't be too many minutes of it. Four there are. So we've got to hold on, but Ward's got the ball. And as long as we're in possession, they can't hurt us. But Hutton heads it away for them to Adebayo. Back to Hutton again over the top. Denham knocks it down for Ward though. McKee into Flores out to Archibald on the left. He switched flanks, but can he still be effective? Archibald held the ball up for Ward. Ward inside to Flores. Back to Ward again. Lovely football with McKee. Ward again for the third time. Orchestrating the game to McKee again. McKee's got a man down the line if he can find him. He doesn't. He goes back to Wilding. Now inside to Ward and McKee. McKee's got Flores. He's got three off him. He can find them. Shoots from the edge again. No one backs the saves. Kennedy tries to cut it back on the rebound, but it's cleared away by Lincoln. They bring the ball away, but the highlight ends. 15 seconds to go, and we've got to throw in an attacking position. Wilding gets the ball in. It's straight up Baxter who claims it comfortably, but the whistle should go when he clears it, and that would be a thoroughly excellent performance. What a result. The whistle has gone. Three points. Brilliant performance, outplayed a side in the top half, and I could not be more pleased with that result. Let's tell the lads they were excellent, they did a brilliant job, we were heavy underdogs, and we made them look silly. A wonderful performance, and we're all the way up to 16th now, and 12 points clear of the relegation zone. I'm so happy managing this team, and I'm delighted we finally got a chance at a professional club. We'll quickly see what they've said about the game, it was not a close encounter. The last five minutes made it look a lot closer than it was but I am not having that headline at all. Archibald was brilliant in this game. We'll go and praise him. Superb in front of goal. It was a great finish. And we'll go and praise a couple of the others in a minute too. If we quickly take you to see the tactic, to see what we've changed and tweaked since the last episode, where we didn't really know what we were going to do, we've gone for this 4-2-3-1 with the sweeper keeper, we're playing fluid counter-attacking football, which you saw in force when we were nodding it away with the centre half, and then quickly getting men forward on the break. The fullbacks aren't really contributing so much, particularly on the left hand side where we aren't as strong. Wilding is occasionally supporting and getting forward, but the midfield five and the centre forward all contribute to the attacks. Joel Ward is a deep line playmaker, but he's on a support duty just so he can get forward and contribute to the move. He steps into midfield and Ferry goes on a run behind the strikers. We've got to get men in support if we're going to play one up front, and it's worked absolutely brilliantly so far. I've also seen a lot of people say they can't get a pressing forward working on his own, but Moraes is certainly managing to do that, despite his fairly limited ability. But obviously with the wage bill above target, he is the one that's at risk of going in the next episode. He's not quite the same quality as the other players on the higher wage. And him and Giorgio are the two we probably would be willing to sacrifice. Let's quickly look at the schedule to see when we'll next be back. We obviously want to show you a January transfer special. Hopefully by deadline day we'll have a bit of wage budget left and our director of football will be going mad. And the first game in February is against Yeovil and the last in January against Newport. So let's look at where those two are. Newport are directly below us and Yeovil are up in 8th place but now only 7 points ahead of us after our decent run. So depending on how the games in January go we'll come back for one of those two as well as deadline day where hopefully our director of football will be providing us with some entertainment. But that will be all for this episode. If you did enjoy it, please put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of our start at Stevenage. Do you think we could even make a late playoff push? Don't forget the club were expected to be up in the top half this season. It's only the poor start that tempered their expectations. Again, for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we're not going to have the regular episodes from these two stories. We're going to have a special transfer window edition from FIFA 19. Our crew save should be at the end of Season 2 by then. And we'll be able to crack on with the summer window as we try to improve the squad with a bit more of an in-depth episode there. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager content from my two FM19 stories. This one, the head coach with Stevenage, as well as our other FM19 story, part of the furniture with Torquay United.
If you haven't seen it yet, go and check out our Christmas special. It was just a fun short series from FM19 where we tried to keep Newcastle up in the Premier League. So if you haven't seen that one yet, go and check it out and let me know what you think. But a massive thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.